Imagine an ocean where water is constantly boiling. It's boundless, there is no coast in sight. It stretches as far as the horizon, although this fact is evasive to the observer, because as far as the eye can see, the horizon is constantly shrouded in dense fog. Thick clouds with not a chink between them hide a huge but dim sun. Only negligible changes in the level of light indicate transitions from nights to days and nights again. If it has stopped being pitch dark and it's deep grey all around you, it means sunrise. And deep down, under scores of kilometers of water, there lies a billion ton core of scorching ice. This is what the unique and mysterious world of Gliese 1214b must look like. The first steps in theoretical confirmation of there being ocean worlds out there, that is, planets fully covered in water, were made back in the 1970s. That is when evidence was found that radioactive decay in a planet's interior and tidal forces may cause water ice to melt and subsequently form huge oceans. In all likelihood, similar processes take place on Jupiter's and Saturn's satellites. However, these celestial bodies remain icebound as they lie too far away from the Sun whose rays would otherwise melt the thick layers of ice. But when we talk about an ocean planet, a slightly different type of space object is meant. The term implies that the ocean on a planet's surface isn't concealed under a layer of ice and its depth measures more than a hundred kilometers. Theoretical calculations of these planets' formation and evolution processes were carried out in 2004 by French astrophysicists headed by Christophe Satan. According to this theory, if the mass of a forming planet is more than 10 times that of the Earth, this starts to actively attract hydrogen and helium from the gas and dust cloud around it. In this manner, with time, it grows into a gas giant. By contrast, if this planet's mass is just 6 to 8 Earth masses, the new planet is going to be comprised of ice and rocks roughly in equal measure. Just to compare, the mass total of all water in the global ocean on our Earth accounts for just 0.025% of the Earth's total mass. In this case, provided a space object's orbit lies far from the host star, this object is going to be either an ice giant or a cold super-Earth. Radioactive decay taking place inside the core will help melt some portion of the ice, which in its turn will help form a subsurface ocean, but the planet's outer layers will still remain frozen. If the planet happens to find itself in its star's habitable zone, its outer layers will melt and spill all over the surface in a boundless ocean. Theoretical calculations show that a planet with a mass six to eight times that of the Earth may have a layer of water over a hundred kilometers thick. The pressure exerted by this amount of water may reach 20,000 atmospheres, depending on temperature, impurities and other parameters. This is enough for some special exotic varieties of ice to form, like ones remaining solid even at high temperatures. In addition, unlike the familiar water ice, these modifications would be heavier than liquid water. For example, the density of ice 7, which is likely to form in these conditions, should be around 1,650 kilos per cubic meter. This ice settles on the planet's ocean's bottom and forms a massive cryosphere that envelops the more massive core. The opportunity to put these theoretical assumptions to test arose when a tiny and dim star was spotted 42 light-years away from the Earth. It was dubbed Gliese 1214. The diameter of this red dwarf turned out to be five times smaller than that of the Sun, with its mass just 15.7% that of the Sun. At the same time, Gliese 1214 is 300 times dimmer than our parent star, while its surface temperature is only 3000 Kelvin, or 2700 degrees Celsius. There is nothing particularly remarkable about the star itself. To be blunt, it is just another nondescript red dwarf that looks like any of the billions of other stars in our galaxy. However, in 2009, a solitary planet was detected in its environs, 
which was dubbed Gliese 1214b. With its diameter measuring two and a half times that of the Earth, this exoplanet is just six and a half times heavier than our home planet. Straightforward calculations show the freefall acceleration on the exoplanet's surface to be just 91% that of the Earth. The average density of Gliese 1214b is approximately 1,870 kilos per cubic meter. Judging by this comparatively small value, the exoplanet cannot realistically be made up of mostly metals and rocks, as is the case with our Earth, for example. But incidentally, this average density value seems to confirm the assumption that the astronomical body is 75% water or water rice and just 25% rocks. Thus, it appears safe to suggest that this exoplanet is an ocean planet. The object lies very close to its host star. The average distance between them measures just around 2 million kilometers or 0.014 astronomical units, which is 75 times smaller than that between the Earth and the Sun. Also, the orbit eccentricity is rather high at 0.27, slightly more than that of Pluto. This means that in its perihelion, Gliese 1214b is approximately twice as close to its star than when in its aphelion. As for its orbital period, it takes the planet about 36 hours to complete it. The red dwarf Gliese 1214 may be 300 times dimmer than the Sun, but this incredible proximity to the star makes the climate on Gliese 1214b scorching hot. Supposing the reflection coefficient of the surface of Gliese 1214b is the same as that of Venus, the planet's surface temperature is supposed to be around 393 Kelvin or 120 degrees Celsius. If, on the other hand, the surface is darker, the temperature may reach as much as 553 Kelvin or 280 degrees Celsius. Due to the fact that the orbit of Gliese 1214b crosses the star's disk, scientists are able to carry out spectroscopic investigations of its atmosphere. Still, the results are rather ambiguous. If this space object really is an ocean planet, its atmosphere is supposed to predominantly consist of water vapor with some accompanying gases. Interestingly, no lines of hydrogen, helium or complex substances like water, CO2 and ammonia have so far been detected in the planet's spectrum. It is thought that the outer layer of the dense atmosphere conceals its true content from the observer. The conditions on the surface of Gliese 1214b remind one of what it is like inside a giant steam boiler. Interestingly, the atmospheric pressure in its lower strata should be at least 15 times as high as that of the Earth. As the ocean and the atmosphere are in a state of thermodynamic equilibrium, the border between them is rather blurred. No wonder, as the density of water vapor just above the ocean's surface is practically equal to that of constantly boiling water. As we look deeper, at the lowest strata of the ocean, the pressure will continue to increase until we reach the depth of 100 kilometers. With the pressure value at this depth, water will be unable to remain in its liquid state even at temperatures this high. And so we will see the bottom made up of dense and heavy ice whose thickness is estimated to be upwards of 5,000 kilometers. Thus, most water on the planet is concentrated here. Below the cryosphere, there should be the core, made up of rocks and metals. Unfortunately, chances of life evolving on any ocean planet are rather thin, even if the surface temperature happens to be more favorable than on this one. This is so due to the fact that oceans on planets like that are too poor in terms of microelements that are vital for living creatures. Even taking into account meteorites that occasionally bombard the surfaces of these celestial bodies, the chemical diversity is simply not good enough for life to originate here. Still, studying ocean planets poses a great scientific interest. According to NASA's mathematical modeling estimates published in 2020, there may be billions of planets of this type in our galaxy, both cold, harboring an ocean under an ice shell, and warm, like Gliese 1214b. Water is one of the most widespread complex chemical compounds in the universe. 
and this means that the chances of discovering new ocean planets are quite optimistic. Meanwhile, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you still haven't done so. Your support greatly boosts our motivation and inspires us to make new, interesting and informative videos. Let's keep in touch!